Hey folks, we are back with another Starbase Summary. Big thanks to Jack for filling in over the weekend for me. Kicking it off with the flame bucket being lifted into the trench there out at Pad B. Massive order of brontosa brontosaurus ribs being served up. I think that's the last time we'll have to say that because uh, now they're in the ground. You can see they've been taking that high bay apart. Big part taken off the top of there. And here's a deluge Y-pipe being delivered. That is an oddly shaped load sort of sticking off the side. You thought the uh, exhaust on your diesel truck was oversized? Look at this thing. I think he's got everybody beat. It doesn't seem to be hooked up yet, though. Here's the second flame bucket. I know there was a long conversation on the uh, vagaries of flame bucket versus flame trench versus whatever, but see how they transported it in that other orientation and then they rotated it. I guess that would be about 90 degrees there to get it into the right ski slope orientation. Not for skiing, for rocket exhaust, uh, but two of those sort of facing back to back to ski jump the exhaust away from the rocket in two main directions. More pipes being moved around out there for that big water system. That's interesting. RVAC-499 moved into Mega Bay 2. How in tarnation do you read that that's RVAC-499? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> There's a second RVAC being moved into Mega Bay 2. And then a third RVAC being moved into Mega Bay 2. I guess you can uh, know that they're RVACs by the size they are. They have those large vacuum-optimized engine bells. I will have to ask the team exactly how they counted that as 499. They probably saw that from some other angle. There's the four-point lifter in Mega Bay 2. The four-point lifter used to uh, pick up ships in a way similar to the chopsticks without having to have those rings of uh, grommets, D-ring, attach points, lifting points around the nose of the ship, right? They use attach points on the side now. And then some concrete work. Over this way is the housing construction. This is sort of between Massey's and the production site. If you're at the production site driving back towards Brownsville, this is going to be on your left-hand side. And there is the Massey's test site, speak of the devil. Got a booster out there, a cell phone tower, a crane, and a couple test stands. Like this truck's real test stand. Good timing where they can put a tank structure in the middle of it and then load it up with uh, various forces and pressures and such to see how their tank design operates. Fares? Whichever word you'd like to use. Just a nice wide shot here. And then this really interesting way that they're cutting these holes in the high bay. Have y'all seen this, how they've made this checkerboard pattern? My, my biggest thinking is that it's potentially for uh, weight and balance. By taking off those sheets, those those squares of material, are they changing the center of mass of those pieces? So when they remove them one at a time, they're they're easier to balance. I don't know the official answer. If you if you have a good guess, put it down in the comments for me. And of course, we continue to watch Pad B. More on that coming up here in a little bit. Nice wide shot of the launch site, or should we say the launch sites? Is is it is it sites? Is it two sites? Is it one site with two pads? Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't get into that right now. A lot of chopstick testing here, so have a look at this. This is in real time, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, and look how quickly the chopsticks can move in real... That is... I mean, they're moving pretty quickly there. You see that when the booster sort of comes in to be caught, they need to be able to swing and catch the booster. They've been doing a good job of that so far. Look at that, still marked as real time here. It really is amazing how quickly those massive structures can move, right? God. Is that, like, calculate the forces, right? You got the length, you got the mass of the things, where the center of general center of mass for the whole thing is there. It was still moving while it was swinging. Like it's like it's a catch. It's moving down and it's trying to... Uh, actually, I gotta go back and watch that. Do they actually try to move down during the catch? I don't think that they do. I just saw it moving while it was... moving down while it was swinging in. Here's a booster coming back in again. Late night roll. That's what you normally see. And the weird checkerboard structure on the high bay. That's so weird how that works or how they've got that cut out. Weird or so interesting from an engineering perspective. You choose the terminology that works for you. 
Going to scoot that in to Mega Bay 1. The second turn to your left there. This is a balcony. Does that still have the glass railing on it? I mean, it looks like it has clear panels, and that one panel is reflecting pretty well. It's interesting that they would leave the glass attached to it, but... Here's a shot from Gage. Gage was over there working on some cameras, and they rolled out this ship thrust simulator. Again, this is a stand, sort of a test rig they can attach a ship to, and then you see all those hydraulic uh, pistons in the middle there. Those pistons push on the attachment points for the Raptors, and they can simulate various loads and forces on the Raptor attach points, sort of like the hard points. Wow! It's like the rack zooms that Gage does there. Um, just all of a sudden, BAM! But that is going to move out. And then here we've got the booster moving around as well. There's the parking garage. And then turning into, that'd be, actually looks like it's uh, the assembly yard all the way down there. Remedios is a street further to our right from this perspective. And this is sort of the first entrance that you go in, or the first entrance that you see. Gate A1, I think. Is that what the sign says? Gate A1? Yeah. The first entrance uh, to the production site and assembly yard area there as you approach Starbase. Some cutting happening in the background there. See some sparks fall. Yeah, there you go. They've got some workers in that crane basket on the crane in the background there, it looks like, doing some cutting work. Look at that. That's a very artsy shot by Gage. The booster with the flight patina in the background. I've I've determined that the right thing to call that is flight patina. <laughs> it does seem to be a a thermal process generally that may change the color of the uh, the booster up there. You can really see the difference here. See the sh the, the cleaner booster versus the uh, less clean booster there as they move over into the rocket garden. There's a high bay section being removed again. We keep seeing the high bay section. It's got a little bit of a spin to it. Usually you want to try and avoid that when lifting things. Wind can catch it. You know, I wonder... Does carrying those pieces down inside the center of the high bay sort of shield them from wind, right? That's an interesting question. Is that intentionally being done, or is that just the way that they can get it down, and it's not really to do with shielding it from wind? There's a hot staging ring, the top crown that goes on the booster to allow the exhaust gases to escape when they light the engines, when it's still attached, or I guess when the ship is still attached to the top of the booster. Exhaust gases from the ship's engines. Looks like they had to do a little bit of a refactoring job, a trajectory refactoring to get it into the door there. And then a hot stage ring being lifted in the bay as well. Another nice wide shot as the clouds pass by. Every now and then it's nice to see that. Hey, look at this. <laughs> it's a Yodi. Apparently everybody's getting pictures of the Yodi. You're going to be a star, Coyote. I'm, I'm never really concerned about hearing the... Wow, Jack got some really good Coyote shots here. I'm not really concerned about the Coyotes. They're, they're a little skinny. I don't know how many Coyotes you could fight. Right? Like, is a coyote going to knock you down? Are they smart enough to, like, they're probably going to bite you, and then your reaction to the bite is going to, like, knock you onto the ground where coyotes can sort of pile on. But there's one coyote. I, I think I could take one coyote. I wouldn't need to. They're generally pretty uh, scared. They don't come up next to you. They don't come begging for treats or anything like that when you're out there working at uh, one of the more remote camera sites we have. There's pad A. It's got that, uh, not a lot of coating or painting happening down there. You see that rust all up and down the legs. Pad B in the background on the right there. Here's a closer shot of Pad B with its gantry structure low and to the left. And the shorter stubby chopsticks there. And yeah, the person for scale walking around the uh, stairs in the middle. This is the gantry I was just mentioning. Still waiting on this to come together, but you can see it's sort of getting filled out on the inside there. Exactly how that looks in the end. I imagine it's going to look very futuristic, like it's got the angles on it, almost a 45 degree angle. I bet you the thing ends up cladded. It may end up coated. It's going to look pretty cool. Uh, less industrial and more futuristic when you take those angles and you actually clad the outside as opposed to having the open structure, right? 
little short chopsticks. Those chopsticks actually look a little funny. But the shorter chopsticks definitely mean there's a lower uh, amount of momentum, right? As the chopsticks move, they're easier to move more quickly because they're smaller, they weigh less, and the lever arm that the uh, mass is sort of acting on, or, yeah, I guess that's right, is a little bit less. Jack really loves the slow motion spark footage here. <laughs> I love the slow motion spark footage too. <laughs> Jack, Jack made an entire video. It's like 20 minutes of slow motion spark footage. We're just trying to find the right way to release it. Oh no, the gate falls over. Didn't want the high bay to have all the fun. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you, Thomas, for the caption on that one. More testing, just lots and lots of chopstick testing here. This is in real time again, helpfully labeled up there. You can actually see it looks like they're intentionally inducing oscillations. Um, the galloping bridge sort of thing, army marching in steps sort of thing, where you have a wave and you in import more force under that wave to reinforce it versus canceling it out. I wonder if that's what they were sort of doing there. Because in real time, it really looked like it was like push and then swing back and then push and then swing back and then push and then swing back. Look at that. My 3D printer does some stuff like that when it tries to calibrate itself. It's like measuring the vibrations of the movement of the, the print head structures and stuff. So I really wonder, is that what they're doing here? Just seeing how much they shake, how much they oscillate, how much they continue to move when they've, they've stopped commanding the move and the momentum sort of keeps them moving a little bit. Then maybe some procedures to damp that out. Whoa! That was fast. Yes, let's do it frame at a time. Possible pad B leg. A lot of people talking about the bolt pattern on the bottom of the leg there. Um, there's been an entire conversation about whether the launch mount will be removable, um, rapidly interchangeable. Is it a mobile launch mount? There are a lot of structures that are bolted down like that, and the, the, the existence of bolts and bolt holds doesn't necessarily mean that it can be rapidly removed. Maybe it's easier to maintain or remove if needed, but that's going to be a huge, heavy structure, and it's going to be a significant amount of work to actually move that thing. Undoing a couple bolts is a very small part of the task if you decide you need to move it. But in any event, that's going to be the Starbase Summary. Twice a week we try to do these to keep you rapidly up to date with what's happening out at Starbase. My name's John. If I answer you down in the comments, I'll probably put DOS. But thank you for watching, and we will see you nerds later.